What's up, people? Uh, little Big Robot back with a video. Do, 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 do. Bandai. This is a, just like my channel talks about, a little version of a big robot in a lot of ways. In this case, it's kind of a, a one-to-one -one scale. Um, this is Bandai's Gunpla Gundam Plastic. Um, one in 144 scale, that means it takes 144 of these stacked on top of each other to equal the real height, I guess. HG uh, stands for high grade. And there are different grades, SD, high grade, master grade, real grade, and they go up from there. <coughs> Perfect grade. Um, and each, that represents basically um, kind of the, not the quality of the kit, but the details, the gimmicks, stuff like that. Although, in basic HG high-grade kits nowadays, even in SD kits, you get a ton of cool details. It's just, it's kind of an astonishing thing on about, it's kind of astonishing how much, see how much dog hair falls out of here, uh, how much they put into an HG kit now. You get so many details. This is from the series Gundam Breaker Battlelog. I've explained it a million times, but for everybody. Um, go check it out. You can just go to Gundam.info. Uh, Gundam.info. Anyway, you go to Gundam.info. You can just put in Gundam.info into YouTube. And you'll find their mini-series. They often put old movies up there. Good thing to subscribe to for um, for uh, Gundam and other mecha-style cartoons for free. They often put them up there. And this is a six-part mini-series about some kids. Essentially, the idea is that you take your little model kit, you set it down... And in this universe, this is all the same universe that I've collected for a few years now, I'm slowly collecting all of them, um, you control that little bot, either the actual physical little bot in the old school series where the plastic had a coating put on it and you could a you actually literally control this little bot, which is probably the coolest little adorable fun story ever. <laughs> That's why I love build uh, the build universe. Or you scan it in, and then you go into a VR world, and you and you control this bot in like a large version of that bot, if that makes sense. So in this case, it's in the new version. It's a VR world. They have similar characters and stories. It's a running universe of a timeline. So go check it out. This is one of the uh, good guys, and it's an outrageous kit. It really is a bit, in my opinion, it's a bit too much. They've been doing a lot of this where they use an old mold, mold and they just throw on some bits. But, I mean, still, I don't collect every kit in the whole world. So anytime I get a new, like this backpack is fantastic. Anytime I, I get a new um, Gundam, because I don't really do all this, the mainstream Gundam stuff, um, I get some neat little part that I'm not really, uh, you know, haven't had yet. So it's always pretty interesting. Even though they're just putting little bits on there, a lot of the old molds are still great. Uh, as with normal Gundam kits, you do get a lot of little bits left. What I tend to do is trim all these off. If it's a part that I'm not sure what it'll ever be used for, I trim it off completely. Or I just trim off that square, see, and I leave a little number, so in case you need verification on what it is later. And then I throw all those bits into different box. For example, I have a box of, uh, you know, uh, effects parts like this. Yeah, that's a cool effects part. I don't even know what that's for, but anyway. And then you throw them all together. You have, like, I have a box of just shields, because I have so many, literally so many shields. And it just goes on and on and on. And, you know, this is how Gunpla is, is such a great deal. It's so cheap. But then you also get all these parts that you can use later in customizing, you know, doing whatever you want. It's just a really, really fun hobby. Um, the sword is outrageous. As usual, it's going to be a gun sword. There's always some gun version. And you get this little effects parts there for, like, the lightsaber bit. Um, I'm not sure how it all folds apart and stuff. I need to go through. The, you know, some of them have a lot of gimmicks and some don't some of the kits, but in typically with uh, build divers, um, you're going, or build fighters, any of the build fighters in line, the, the gimmick is, you know, you're going to have some gimmicks. This one though, this line in particular is, is they ask you to, they say, hey, this is, this is a line that is meant for you to combine. Where's the combination page? Open up all the way, please, Bo. My God. Um, to combine with other kits. So you're like, okay, cool. So for example, gosh, sorry, I never do this, but this one is saying combine this with, uh, the, which one is that one? That is the Blazing Gundam, Gundam Perfect Strike Freedom. So let's, let, let me grab the Blazing Gundam and I'll show you. And, 
remember. <coughs> Excuse me. Did I review the Blazing Gundam? <laughs> I can't remember. So as you can see, they kind of all have a, uh, the good guys all kind of have a similar generic look. But the idea being that you can use the head from that one. So that's the Blazing Gundam's chest. That's using the shield. Is that what they're asking you to do here? Or the arm? I can't quite tell because I'm looking at it. No, that's the arm. So you're going to take that off of the Blazing Gundam. You can put the shield on. That's just a weapon. It's just... Let's kind of set that to the side. Um, you know, so you could do stuff like that. Anyway, at minimum, what you can do is take off the arms, combine arms, you know, stuff like that. You can see the difference already in the size and stuff. Take off the head, of course. Oops. Combine, you know, use one head on another kit, uh, stuff like that. Um, actually, I like that head better. I did the Blazing Gun head I didn't like much at all. So the idea is that you're using, you're combining stuff. You know, you can get as elaborate as you want, but with Gundam plastic model kits, it, the, you always have had that ability, except that you might have to, like, if you took this arm from an older kit, you might have to, to shave it a bit or force it to get in there and, you know, work with it, use some putty. So there was a little bit more craftsmanship in some of the way they used to do it. These days, not that it's a bad thing at all, but you really do have such a more uh, a universality um, to all the kits that you don't have to work as hard. Let's see, so I'm taking that backpack and put it literally. So what they do back in the day, you would have that backpack could fit in that model kit. Then you would take it and you'd want to put it in one from the same year or maybe a similar two years later a kit. And the holes would be in different shapes or different sizes or distance apart. So you'd have to... I'll just cut it and then I'll glue it, da, da da So you had to work with stuff a lot more, kind of, and you still do with certain lines. But what I like about this one is, yeah, you can combine them, stuff like that. It's, you know, you could do that anyway. It's more about, for somebody who might be new to the hobby, you know, you can pick up the entire six or eight uh, kit line and give it to, a, you know, a 12-year-old or a 10-year-old, and they can do this pull and pop in plug and play style stuff if that makes sense and it's just so much easier and then if they want to get into customizing and actually spending a lot of time uh you know sanding and painting and stuff you can they can do that so it's a good introductory series as usual though these are just they're so tight now that the joints and in a good way like they're just so poseable and they just we really take it for granted. I always talk about this, but look at the, like the, to, the toe pointy thing, <laughs> you know, I mean, just little stuff like that. It's just every kit. It's just standard now that you have a kit that can do at minimum some really interesting stuff. This one is not so crazy. Um, some of them like the blazing gun. A lot of them will have these little, they love doing this stuff now. We have like a little pop-up kind of style, you know, like transformations kind of mode thing where it's just really moving some parts around or whatever. But I love that. Um, but even without that, you can you still get these cool these cool looks and, and ability to put them in amazing poses and stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do a video coming up about posing my toys on the shelf. I never really do that, but as I've just I've started to do it, I really have I, I've been wondering why I haven't been doing it all along. It's kind of like being um, an older person and playing with your toys it's a good way to kind of do that without you know you know you don't actually play with them like war when you're a kid it's just you're an adult it just doesn't happen <laughs> your mind doesn't work in the same way I wish it did but posing them is a kind of a good way to do that but this backpack is fantastic I mean even just the 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 this was what 26 bucks for the kid even the 26 bucks for just the extra bitch you get I mean that thing is incredible if you needed that for something you could use that on a GI Joe you could use it you know it's anything like this is kind of scale agnostic i love stuff like that and gunpla a lot of time has a lot of that going for it so you can <clears throat> excuse me pop i want you to pop it upside down you can so you can do this out completely outrageous one look at that so you know it's it not a, these are like thrusters i guess it's like a space thingy or whatever but you can see it doesn't really matter you're just doing something that looks cool i don't really know what the, i'm sure this means something here this add-on bit i think it's part from uh, another kit. I can't remember what that came from. But anyway, um, it, it just looks fun and interesting. And so if you don't like something, <clears throat> excuse me, you can easily replace a bit 
uh, these days with something else. So you can take that off and that standard bit will fit on all sorts of things. So, you know, and then if you really wanted to get into it and you wanted to go ahead and start truly painting and customizing and sanding and getting the seam lines out, although seam lines are not near the issue they used to be back in the day, <clears throat> excuse me, you can do that. You can get into the more advanced stuff and you're just going to have a blast because the parts nowadays are so fantastic. I like how this one too, the backpack is almost a stand. So if you stand them up, it's going to help. Like there's no moving that toy on your shelf, but just a really neat one. It's again, not my favorite type of design. It's not, I don't like standard Gundams. I never have been. This is kind of just a big batch of mess to me, you know, in my opinion, design wise. But if you like Gundams or you just like the series or just kind of like a big bulky kit with a lot of plastic, this is a good one to go for. Around 26 bucks. They're going, keep an eye out for these uh, Gundam Breaker Battle Log kits because now they've had so many of them ordered. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry, I have allergies today. Um, I found them 30, 35% off already. So you're get, you can get five or six of them for 100 bucks or whatever it is. So it's not a bad deal. Enjoy everybody. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.